Woohoo! Ice rod! There it is! I I knew it! I knew it! What's up, dudes and dudes to the internet? My name is Seth, and we are back again with some more Zelda Breath of the Wild. Yeah. So I just came to the top of this mountain here, and I actually fought our very first icy lizard dude, whatever. Killed an ice mage up here as well. Got his blizzard rod uh, once again, and our weapon that we got. I'll explain all this air junk that we've got too. So, as far as the blizzard rod is concerned, this is very interesting. I, you know, I don't know, you know, I don't really know or uh, cling to any spoilers in this game. That's a really cool looking tree. We'll try and check that out today. That's not a tree, that's a fort. Oh, so cool. But we're up in the icy mountains uh, in the, what was this area? The Gerudo Highlands, right? Man alive, I can barely even see up here. Uh, but as far as the rods are concerned, apparently there is actually different types of magical rods. So, for example, this is the AOE version of the ice rod, uh, or the blizzard rod, I guess it's called, right? And then there's also supposed to be apparently a blizzard or, or just a normal ice rod that operates similarly to the fire rod. Maybe, not exactly sure, but I do know that there are different qualities of staves, uh, or staves, however you want to pronounce it, that end up having uh, different quality spells to them. Man, this area is way too bright. Way, way too bright. Like, seriously, I don't like it. it. It's too much. I can barely see the ground. Even after I killed the enemy mage, I could barely see this staff sitting on the ground. But, as I sail over here to the other side of yonder chasm, I, I got I got some cool oh my look at that that looks like we can melt it let's go check that out too but um, I've been busy like seriously super duper busy because pretty much this is kind of how I approach my content all right folks when it comes to open world games everything uh, is all about the sense of discovery so as we're figuring things out uh, you know as we're discovering new things it can be very, very slow because it means that since everything is being discovered for the first time, it means that I personally don't feel like making that many cuts in the videos. But now that we're starting to get a little more familiar with the game and the gameplay and stuff like that, now I've been doing a lot more stuff off camera in the locations that we have actually discovered, uh, you know, and just making more cuts in the videos for travel time and stuff because it's not the first time we've ever done it before, right? So anyways, I climbed up a mountain over here and we've got two shrines that we can check out. Uh, this little skull is actually a golem. Uh, another one of those, I don't know, one of those giant big rock geodude dudes, right? There's also a little quest over in Impus Town here. I didn't start the quest. That's kind of the thing. I didn't start any of these. I just discovered them, right? Uh, and then apparently there's also supposed to be something very interesting on the proxy bridge. I think that's what that place is called. I can't tell because of my marker. But we got to go there at nighttime, so hopefully we'll have enough time to do that today. Uh, and then in general, this was... Oh, this was from the first episode. Jeez Louise, that's so early on. This we don't need for sure. Uh, but then there was actually... Uh, I'm kind of using these markers because you can only have 100 markers at a time. That's why I've been very spare, uh, sparing with them. And uh, trying to only mark like all of the skulls are going to end up being golem dudes because you actually farm those guys at the blood moon so that you can end up getting ore and then you sell it for a ton of rupees, right? But anyways, let me uh, grab some... Some footage here and show you all what I've been up to because seriously there is a lot to recap first of all this is the luchador armor and what it looks like in the night very swag as well as I've heard that the armor has a secret passive that actually makes more skeletons spawn at night I don't know why the game doesn't tell us that anyways up on this cliffside right here I was just hanging out found this random rock bada bing bada boom got an Eric Rook seed and then on the other side of the same mountain there was this boulder over here and then there was kind of like the hole up on the side this was actually really really difficult because I kept having to stasis lock the boulders hit them just enough that they would end up going up the mountain and landing in the hole and I got a little bit lucky with uh, how the physics ended up working but it gave us an Eric Rook seed I have also snuck up on goats to the best of my abilities while in a ninja suit. We'll talk about that in a bit. And I, 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 I still, they, they still just get automatically alerted. So unless there's a way to make your character go absolutely invisible, 
And near as I can tell, you can't actually ride a goat. <laughs> Maybe you secretly can, I don't know. But anyways, uh, this is that skull that I just mentioned previously about the uh, rock dude. He was pretty difficult to fight just because he was the first one that I ended up uh, like spending extra time to fight off camera because otherwise the only one that we engaged previously was the ice one that was on the mountain that we're on right now, like on the actual area. So I kind of found out uh, that you can actually climb on these dudes. Shout out to my friend Max Gaming 45 for that one because I, I for the life of me, I, I was thinking old conventional video games, you try to touch this guy, you're gonna end up getting hurt. So they've been a lot easier to fight now that I know you just climb up them Shadow of the Colossus style, and then depending where that little ore node is, that's gonna be their weak point. So with this one on the mountain, he was super duper easy because I could just stand at the top and wail on him like crazy, right? And then way at the top of the mountain, there was these two statues here. One of them had an apple in front of it, the other one didn't placed an apple in front of the second statue, and we got ourselves a Narukuro seed. And then just a little ways down on the second mountain, there was a Nara rock, and uh, well, Yep, you know it. Now this one was a complete accident. There was these boulders just on the top of the mountain here. I thought, okay, maybe I just gotta get rid of them. I don't know. But I accidentally ended up having the other boulder here roll down between two trees that were on the cliffside, and I guess it was like, goal, because suddenly we ended up getting an Ark Rogue Seed, and I didn't even know why. Oh, and where we ended up getting our horse, remember that giant tree that I said I was gonna check out? Yeah, so I did, I climbed up it, and lo and behold, there was actually a Karok up there. Also, I found this interesting little spot kind of hidden in the corner of that same uh, horse field. Uh, there was just a chest hidden behind some rocks that ended up giving us a purple rupee, which was beautiful. At the time, I didn't really have that many. And I also ended up finding a bear in that same forest and also got to ride him, which was awesome and scary at the same time. I don't know if there's any benefit to actually doing so. You can't tame the wild animals, but there's so many different creatures that you can ride in this game. So I've been trying it on all sorts of things. The bear just happened to be easy. Okay, and then this guy, whoa. So there was this giant skeleton kind of hidden in the ground here. And for the life of me, I, you know, I was really cautious walking up to it. I was scared out of my wits. Like this thing is huge, I, you know? and uh, he didn't end up activating or anything, so I thought, okay, maybe this is just some weird runes or something. Nope! He ended up activating when the night time cometh, and, uh, yeah, he, he was really difficult to kill, but he did actually have a lightning sword stabbed inside him that we ended up getting once we defeated him. He, he was a difficult boss, but he was very, very cool, though he'd grab trees and throw them at me and stuff. It was absolutely awesome. And the fact that he technically is farmable, every blood moon anyways, for infinite of the electric sword, right? So that tells me that the electric sword, uh, you know, the ice sword, uh, I'm assuming there's gonna be fire-based sword and stuff like that. All of those are most likely going to be farmable uh, because otherwise up to this point we've only found them in shrine chests, right? Oh, and then kind of right beside him in the lake there was this rock just kind of sitting there right by the waterfall. Karok seed. And at that first stable area at the Dueling Peak, the Dueling Peak stable, climbed up to the top and then there was an Arakarok seed just on top of the stable. Also, I thought this was really, really cool. So I ended up going back and talking to Valeria, whatever, uh, in the Gerudo town. And she can actually remake the ancient Gerudo shield and sword for one diamond each. Now that's a bit pricey for a resource like that, but the shield has been absolutely great. The sword very powerful. Awful, but man does it break easy. I just thought it was cool that these resources are actually you can get them over and over Anyways, I defeated another desert golem and he ended up dropping lots of ore That was that one from a couple episodes back. So then over here by the great cliffs uh, I ended up just stumbling upon this little puzzle right here Used the magnet block brought the block over to the other side to match the pattern That's what I've been noticing as these uh, these puzzles usually are can you match the pattern on the other side and then well Narika rope also, this one really stumped me for a long time because there was this little fan over here in this section by the uh, Proxim Bridge, right? And if you stand on top of the log, for the life of me, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know where the uh, actual targets were. And then I just noticed them on the other side of the uh, wall where 
Ay, 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 ay. It was actually really, really difficult, but another Kurok seed in the bag. I'm bending down like a freak because I got to click on the next video, right? Also, just casually while I was in there, ended up magnetizing some giant doors to reveal a chest. Not really anything special inside it. Just thought it was cool to actually point out that stuff like this was out there. Also, underneath the Proxim Bridge, there was another little random boulder, so we got our seed. Also, a couple episodes back, we took a peek at this little fan dude right here, kind of in the starting area. It was another archery challenge, so another Kurok in the bag. ka -ching. Oh, also the beetle merchant buys beetles, or, well, he doesn't buy them. He'll he'll actually exchange them for different resources and stuff. He actually ended up giving me a pretty, pretty good mighty elixir, so very, very cool that they have stuff like that. I guess that's a good reason to actually go and collect some beetles. I don't know if you can collect enough that he gives you something. So I found this tree, shot the pot that was inside it, and, uh, yup, random Kuroke. Also, I found out from some gifts I saw online that you can actually drop bombs while paragliding. So that was really, really cool, and I've been having a blast with that. Oh, and then uh, kind of sitting near the uh, tar pit, the tower that's on the Gerudo Canyon, I ended up coming over here, saw this random pot, shot it, another Kurok seed. Nearby to that, there was this boulder separated from its home, the little hole right there. Talk about a hole in one, another seed in the bag. I also ended do up doing the uh, a nice guy or, or an ice guy quest. Did that one off camera because we just needed to make an icy elixir, kind of a cold one for this dude. And uh, well, it, it didn't really give us anything worthwhile, just a couple rupees, but it was still a cool side quest. And then over by Impa's place, I noticed that there was another little circle of lily pads to jump into. So you guessed it. And this one, oh man. So in the spawn area, there's a Kurok. GG, Nintendo. Also flying off of the spawn area, I noticed this hanging out in the middle of the woods, and well, you guessed it, again, again. Then there was a giant log in the starting area, followed the flower around for a little bit, and well, there was also uh, apparently one of these giant rock golem dudes in the starting area as well, kind of in the little plateau that's in the woods. This one was extremely easy though, especially now that I actually know how to fight them. And you remember way back when we ended up fighting the ice rock dude on the mountain? Yeah, so I figured out how to beat him. He's still really tough, but now that I know I could climb on him, you'd hit him with a fire arrow so that he would end up getting stunned and falling over so that you could climb up him, watch out for his arms because those will freeze you, climb up him, attack him as many times as you can before he ends up getting back up. However, just a little quick tip if uh, you're watching at home and trying to figure out how to beat this guy, I found that if you pop a strength potion, you can actually get him stun locked where you'll hit him just enough with a full combo that he'll kind of get dazed and fall over and you can kind of repeat that over and over till he's dead. Also, just right over the hill, right beside him, there was this random snowball. I didn't even know that you could pick it up the first few times I kept trying to stasis it, but picked it up, put it in its hole, got an Arakarok seed. I also did something that my brother showed me online where you can stasis a log, hit it a couple times, climb on top of it, and rock it away. That's seriously just been a lot of fun. Anyways, let's do the screenshot recap of some of the items that I ended up finding. A mop, a double-bladed axe, a Lizzle Tri-Boomerang, which just looks like a mess. A Fairy, which automatically gets consumed if we end up reaching zero health, so very, very useful. A Steel Lizzle Bow. Sank Carp. I also found this dude in the starting uh, Impa's town or whatever, and he was kind of talking about like paintings and stuff like that, and then he said that there was a great fairy fountain nearby. Now, I don't know where that is, but hopefully I'll be able to find it. Not necessarily uh, today, though. The reason why I was able to do so much stuff off camera is I was trying to grind up my resources, grind up my rupees. At first, I just kept coming to the desert and selling lizard horns and stuff like that because they fetch a pretty penny. But most of all, I was doing it so we could start buying some armor because otherwise I didn't like the fact that we ended up getting that luchador costume and it didn't really... I, I didn't like it, so I ended up going back to the accessory shop, spending three rupees, five... or uh, th three rubies... Haha, <laughs> and 500 rupees to actually buy the ruby circlet. 
This, of course, gives us some cold resistance, so that on top of our shirt has us almost immune to everything that it, there is to do with cold. Also, grab the amber earrings for 10 amber and 100 rupees. These suckers just offer you raw defense. Got the sapphire circlet for 3 sapphire and 800 rupees, and this ended up giving us some heat resistance, so that's going to end up being... Well, actually, I gotta test that out because I ended up getting the heat-resistant male Gerudo armor as well, but I'll show you all of that in a minute. Also, while we were on the mountain that we're still on right now, you may have forgotten because of all the clips I ended up showing, but I found some shock arrows in a chest. Hi yay 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 Been so super-duper busy with all of that stuff, we might not even have that much time to go out and adventure! Yeah, I know! So, outside of all of that, the reason, you know, I still was grinding, grinding, grinding because look at all the new pieces of armor that we've got. Oh my goodness. So we've got the Desert Voa suit. This was actually in the secret clothing area uh, where we ended up having to use the password, right? So this actually looks pretty cool. You know, we're not going to be able to see what it actually looks like on our character it's too, too much right here because otherwise we're going to freeze to death. But look at that heat resistance in the bottom right. That is seriously crazy, dude. Now, one thing I do want to double check is uh, where's the heat resistant helmet? So let's take a peek and see, is that gonna end up, that just gave us pretty much the exact same amount of heat resistance. So unfortunately, it seems like it was useless for me to actually get uh, this thing right here because we already have like the other, the, the armor itself, which rip, whatever. So then there's also the starting armor, which looks really, really cool. Uh, definitely makes him look like an adventurer, uh, you know, the hoodie on him and everything like that. An absolutely awesome style, especially whenever we finally get to the uh, guy that's going to be able to dye our clothes. Um, then there is also my favorite suit that I've been rocking, whoopsie daisy, is the Sheik costume, or at least the throwback to the Sheik costume, because as far as I know, if you use the Sheik amiibo, you'll actually get her actual suit. This is kind of a throwback to it, kind of the, uh, kind of the Breath of the Wild version of the ninja suit, and it's absolutely beautiful, and the sneaking has been a lot more useful than I thought it would be, because I've been able to sneak up on game, you know, like hunting and stuff like that. Uh, also sneaking up on monsters, and I didn't know that out in the open world, you can actually get stealth kills very similar to how we were doing it when we were invading the Yiga clan, right? So absolutely awesome that they just have like so many different gameplay elements to this game, and just all of this stuff is absolutely great. Now you can see as well, it is freezing up here. Whoopsie daisy, well he's dead. It is freezing up here. Almost absolute zero. Well, goodbye resources. Thanks, physics. But thankfully, because of our shirt and the circlet that we've got on, it, it balanced out. So I don't know whether or not there's like some cold resistant pants or anything like that and whatever. I don't care. I was kind of half heading over here because there's this giant skull set up. But I'm very curious to see uh, about this ice over here, you know? And honestly speaking, who really cares? Uh, about the skull that's back there, well, it probably would have ended up being some really good resources, because as you saw, we ended up fighting our first, uh, well, no, we didn't actually have that on camera, but I ended up fighting that ice lizard up here, as I mentioned, and he was, he was tricky. Oh my goodness gracious, that is a gigantic ice cube, like seriously, and that is a lot of lizards over there. That is a lot of lizards. How many charges? Yeah, we got enough charges. Okay. Oh, and then I also found this dragon bone moblin hell, uh, weapon or whatever while we were up on that uh, cliffside that we were on two seconds ago. Uh, kind of running low on resources here. I don't know. Did we actually show these on camera as well? The giant boomerang? I, I didn't take a picture of that, but as you saw, the charge attack is insane because we just spin around and do the windmill attack. That's awesome. Uh, let's take this one because it's actually a really good weapon, and I'm going to drop down a save. Okay, now one thing that's awesome about this game, if I can end up doing it, is that headshots almost always give you... Yeah, they, they actually, uh, for scouts anyways, almost always end up giving you a one-shot kill, which is great, isn't it? Oh my goodness, he one-shot me. Let me see if I can do this. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. Close. There we go, got him. Okay, goody, goody gumdrops. So, uh, yeah, this is gonna be tricky. Let's see if we can do this. There we go. Get them all stun locked with the electrocutions, which is gonna be great for us. 
Uh, we do actually have a second one that we can end up dropping down. So you know what? I'm just going to use that right now. Because uh, otherwise those guys were going to definitely end up being a little bit of trouble. Okay, so we got uh, a couple resources here. Got another one of those giant axes. Very, very powerful two-handed weapon. Like, seriously powerful. Uh, and then is this... Yeah, this is actually one of those better bows. So you know what? I'm going to drop this one because I used it. And pick this sucker up because that bow is going to be a lot more useful than the other one. Another knight's shield, which we don't necessarily need. A knight's broadsword, that's okay. Oh, and then one other thing that I ended up finding out as well. I, I would have never, ever found this out in my wildest dreams. But apparently, you can actually throw rusty pieces of gear at an octo that vacuums it up, and he'll spit out a clean, power, more powerful version of that weapon. I don't think it works with anything other than the rusted weapons, but man alive, the attention to detail this game has. Isn't it amazing? I love it. So let me just search around the area and see if there's anything worthwhile, because I want to take a peek at that ice today, uh, even if we don't end up actually getting to melt it. Now, the other thing, too, is we should probably just go in a beeline uh, towards the forest, like the... Uh, uh, where the Kuroks are hanging out because otherwise we're not going to be getting resor or, uh, inventory space for quite some time and I want my inventory space dude like we need it bad we're running low on space with everything uh, so anyway this is the giant uh, boomerang if I didn't already show you it's the same as any boomerang just throw it but it's so big it's really <laughs> sometimes it ends up getting lost right here's that giant axe that we ended up just getting which is beautiful uh, and then also I did show off the two handed uh, two headed axe which actually was one of my favorite weapon types as a kid oh my that's two mages Ooh. okay so are they guarding it or something that's not good so you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna shoot once to get them distracted Okay, we're a little bit further than I thought we were. I want to I want to try and shoot once to get them distracted, uh, and then maybe we'll snipe them if we can. Let me see. Okay, let me shoot an arrow over there. That should distract him. Go check it out. Yeah, there you go. And then I missed him. There we go. We got him in one shot. Okay, good. I gotta be careful because we don't have many fire arrows left. That's the problem. Did that get him distracted? Okay, there we go. And... Boom! Take that, you stupid idiots! Okay, now let's see. Did they end up dropping a special wand? Or just a normal one? I don't really know what we're supposed to do about this giant ice thing here. It's beautiful, but man, it definitely... Woohoo! Ice rod! There it is! I, I knew it! I knew it! A magical rod crafted from refined ice found in the Hebrew Mountains. This rod can cast waves of freezing air. Great for magic, not so great for melee. Okay, well, let's drop some stuff that we've got here. What the... Oh, the electric arrows ended up filling up in our inventory slot. Let's get rid of this. This is almost broken so that we can end up grabbing both of these suckers. So let me let me take a quick peek. Let's see what this actually does. Looks really cool. Okay. I mean, I mean, I get it. I thought it, I, I kind of thought that it was going to be the same as the fire bowl, uh, the fire rod. But I guess that wouldn't really make that much sense for it to do that, right? So there's our arrow that we ended up losing. So how do we actually get into this thing if we can at all? Because I don't think, uh, even if we end up setting something on fire, I really don't think that it's going to end up... Um, like, I really don't think this is going to end up melting from just a tiny little flame, right? There we go. Got a nice little fire going. And then I'm also going to, at least for right now... Let's drop one of our weapons here. Let's actually drop that one. It's a good weapon, but I want to be able to uh, grab this club so that we can set it on fire and then kind of see... Is this, is this actually melting? Oh, wow, it is. Ooh, that's going to take a long, long time, dude. I may have to go and get a torch, but I don't think there's a fast travel point anywhere nearby. This weapon's going to end up bur uh, breaking down before we can actually... Uh, Melt the ice here. Jeez. That's really cool, though. Really reminds me of Majora's Mask, dude. Like, seriously awesome. Oh, the spike club broke. The spike club broke. I don't think that this thing is going to end up... Um, 
I, I don't think it's gonna stay, uh, stay as melted as it is. Uh, if we end up, like, leaving and coming back. It's a shrine! Dude, you kidding me? We gotta melt this so that we can get the fast travel point? That's mean. Well, you know what? There's some trees up there, so maybe we can set those on fire. Blast the tree over, and please don't roll down the hill all the way. Okay, good. It stopped on the ledge. Whew! Uh, there was also those boxes down there, which I guess, technically speaking, we could have set those up uh, to catch fire, but rip. So I'm gonna hit it with some stasis. I don't want to accidentally kill myself, but let's knock it down there and then... I mean, this might work, but honestly, I don't know. Okay, while I wanted to actually get it to uh, just be set up, like, really nicely, I wanted to just have it as a nice line from one end to the other. Uh, doesn't seem like we can do that, and it doesn't seem like it catches fire. Oh, man. Really? That kind of sucks. Maybe we can set up a chain reaction of flames here. I want to try and get this today, but if not, we'll, uh, I guess, just have to have it unlocked. Uh, like, I'll melt it all off camera, and we'll uh, do it in the next episode, maybe. Let's see. I mean, it's kind of working a little bit, but the fact of the matter is that it doesn't really... I mean, it worked a little bit, but not much. It is still melting it right now, just very, very slowly. Yeah, see, so we can kind of chain react it like this, but, uh, oh, this kind of sucks. Oh! It did it! It did it! Awesome, dude! Oh, I didn't know it was going to do that, so I'm going to get this fast travel point ready, and I guess in the next episode we're going to be going shrine crazy, because we're going to get this one. Most of all, because I want that fast travel point. Uh, and then we're going to hit these ones up and uh, maybe see if we can actually have enough time to see this uh, bridge at nighttime. But otherwise, we've gone way over time. I'm going to have to make so many cuts in today's episode. It's ridiculous. But I hope that you enjoyed it regardless. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like, share, favorite, and subscribe for more daily content. Sign on. Stay up, everybody.